he was dazzled by her beauty. The pair met in Johannesburg in 1957 and fell deeply in love. The 23-year-old social worker and 40-year-old lawyer were both tall and striking. They cut a glamorous couple. As close friend Amina Kachalia recalls, Nelson Mandela was besotted from the start. He brought her to us to visit after he came, they came back from um, the Trans Sky. And he brought her to my flat and I remembered she was sitting on the couch, the only couch we had in the room. Um, very quiet, just paging through some magazine that was there and uh, not saying very much, almost shy in a way. The charismatic pair married and settled in Orlando Soweto in 1958. They had two daughters, Zenani and Zinzi. However, the harsh reality of the political struggle interrupted this fairy tale when Nelson Mandela was sentenced to life imprisonment in 1964. He felt so deprived always because he couldn't be there for them. He blamed himself. If anything went wrong with his family, he always blamed himself. Mandela poured out his love and longing for her in deeply romantic letters while behind bars. But the pain and persecution were taking their toll on Winnie, who was now raising two young children alone. In her memoirs, Winnie writes, Loneliness is worse than fear, the most wretched and painful illness the body and mind could be subjected to. She was constantly harassed, constantly uh, raided, and, and um, she just withstood it all. I sometimes wonder, she had great courage. That self-control that he developed was something that she never had. I mean, they were yin and yang in the sense of, I think they were both very emotional people, but he was able to control it in a way that, that she was not. And, and I think he thought that she ought to be able to. But that was not to be. As her stature grew in the struggle, so too did her indiscretions. She began taking lovers. Everybody understood, of course, that the placing of that particular piece of news in Mandela's cell was simply an attempt to undermine him, undermine his spirit, undermine his political authority. More embarrassment followed for Mandela and the ANC leadership. Her bodyguards, the Mandela United Football Club, were terrorizing Soweto. From his jail cell, Mandela pleaded with her to disband the club, but Winnie was uncontrollable. On the historic day of his release, it was Winnie who held his hand, reunited before the world. A superficial display of marital bliss, but Mandela put on a brave face. And when she was found guilty of kidnapping, Mandela protested her innocence. My faith in her has been fully vindicated. I believe that she did not know about such assaults. Winnie was to continue her romantic liaisons despite the fact that her husband was now home. It devastated Mandela. It hurt him enormously, as, as he said. Um, and, and yet he wanted to, to cauterize that wound as soon as possible. I mean, he didn't want people to see it. Um, and it, it, it was an incredibly painful time for him. He finally relented to pressure from ANC colleagues and in 1992 announced that he and Winnie were separating. My love for her remains undiminished. However, in view of the tensions that have arisen owing to differences between ourselves in a number of issues in recent months. We have mutually agreed that a separation would be best for each one of us. I don't think he ever thought that 
he would be separated and parted from Winnie. She was the love of his life. She was the mother of his children. And he, he was very fond of her. Uh, but circumstances, she had carried on with her life while she was in, in prison in a difficult way. But she made a life for herself. And it was difficult for both of them to reconcile. The pair finally divorced in 1996, bringing to an end 38 years of marriage. A bitter end to a passionate love affair and one of the great trials of Mandela's life. Nigiwe Bigita, E News, Johannesburg. Know more about your world. ENCA.com.